as it's found in the book to the Hebrews. I will be reading from chapter 11, beginning at verse 29 and ending at 12 and 2. Let us now together listen to and for the word of the Lord, where the writer lifts these examples to us. It says there, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. And by faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more? should I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women, received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goat, destitute, persecuted, tormented, and of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not apart from us be made perfect. Therefore, my friend, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus as the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? We thank you yet again, O oh God, for this marvelous day and we thank you for your presence that has been in this space in song and in prayer and in worship, but we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you might just lean a little closer, whisper a little bit more clearly to heads and hearts that we might be touched, that we must be taught, that we might be transformed. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray and the people of God all said, amen. The lectionary this week brought us some very interesting offerings and at the worship table we debated back and forth over the selection of the scripture for this day. We had the book of Isaiah where the prophet uh, is a little bit angry with his people. Do you think? This is where you say yes. Uh, and, 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 and a word of judgment is uttered and in the gospel according to Luke, as you have read it, because I know you all follow the lectionary very closely, and you read all of the offerings for the week, and, and, and Jesus tells the people he has come not to bring peace but the sword, and he was going to bring fire to the earth, and oh, how he wishes the earth was already kindled. And he asked them, if you know how to interpret the signs of the clouds in the sky, and you know when rain is coming, why can you not interpret, discern the times that we live in? But I was most drawn to, and so were all of those around the table, to the one wonderful book of Hebrews. 
And, and Brad was helping me the other day and knowing that Hebrews is not really so much an epistle, more of a sermon. It was written, he told me, um, and thank you for that, by the way, uh, that, that, that it, it was not written probably by the Apostle Paul, but rather perhaps by a second-generation Christian who was writing to second-generation Christians who, who, after all this time, had been baptized, had been taught, had learned how to live in community, had, uh, had internalized the norms of, of the Christian faith, uh, and, and this time they were so grown they ought to be teaching everybody. Message. That at this point they ought to be teachers of the faith. They've been in church 40 years. And they still come and getting stuff when they ought to be giving stuff. I don't know if that helps you or not. I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, uh, but somehow or another it seems that the people of God had gotten stunted in their growth. <coughs> they were not quite the spiritual redwoods that the writer expected and anticipated that they should be. Uh, so he composes an exquisite piece of exhortation, of, of preaching, if you would. And as I read it, uh, I, I, I said, if I could preach like that, I might be somebody when I grow up. Hallelujah. And he constructs for them, uh, out of the narrative of salvation history, a wonderful tome, lifting Jesus and saying that he is the author and perfecter of our faith. How so? Well, I'm glad you asked me, Bess. Uh, it seems that Jesus uh, was just like us. That he walked like we walked and he talked like we talked and he laughed like we laughed and he cried like he, we cried and he got tired like we got tired and he got joyful like we got joyful and he ate like we ate. Which proves that Jesus was a Methodist. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and even though he is a great high priest and even though the writer details that he is surely the son of God, Jesus was also just... Ordinary people. And, 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 and you know, ordinary, I think, carries sometimes a not too good connotation. If you look it up in the dictionary, uh, which Rocky did last week and he reported to me, he said, uh, uh, ordinary is normal, unremarkable, uninspired. Said, said ordinary sometimes even has a negative Dale connotation. Oh, that's just an ordinary thing. But, 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 but I would say to us that there is something uh, remarkable about being ordinary. And that's what the writer lists for us in this tremendous 11th chapter of Hebrews, the, the faith hall of fame. He begins there by saying, now faith is, I like that, the substance of things hoped for. Is that right, Rudy? That's what it the says. evidence of things not seen. And then he begins uh, with a preacher's rhetorical flourish to say, by faith, by faith, by faith. And he calls all the names in the book. <clears throat> he calls on Abel and Noah and Abraham and, and, and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses. And then he calls on the prophets, the judges, the priests and the kings. He, 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 he lists this wonderful array, this universe of, of all of the heroes of faith and, and the thing that's common about all of them is they were just ordinary people who got called into extraordinary circumstances. And I would say to us that the list does not end with them because we have a bunch of ordinary people who have made a tremendous difference. Who are ordinary people? I don't know, Alice Snitzer. I don't know, ordinary Kendall Solon, John Dodge, Bill, I, Debbie Irick, I see, I see remarkable ordinary people, what? All over the place. Now there is a downside, a negative, if you would, to being ordinary. Because most of us live ordinary lives. I mean, we go along to our day and day thing, yes? And most of us go along to get along, yeah? yeah. Most of us don't do anything extraordinary, out of the ordinary. I mean, we, we just kind of go day to day. 
But I think that sometimes our lives get normed by the way we live day to day. And sometimes those norms ain't so hot. You know, some of the things we do normally, I don't think are very pleasing to God. Because some of our norms, such as sexism, you can't say amen, say ouch, ready? Ouch, ouch, ouch. Racism, are, are you with me here? And these are things that become what? Norm, they are taught to us and we live into them. And sometimes we don't even know how we're living into a consumerism. Got to buy the latest, the biggest, the best, the best. We got to have a BMW 5. <laughs> That's where I step on my own feces. And what the writer is doing is he's showing us these people, not because they're extraordinary, but because they are ordinary people who lived out of an extraordinary faith. The end for them, the point for them, was not that they might make the list. They didn't even know that the writer was going to put them on the list. If they had known that, they probably would not have made the list. Rather, their faith in something bigger than they were, their faith in a God that they believed was able, and they did not even receive the thing that was promised. This is another thing that's wrong with some of our contemporary saints. Many of us become Christians because we think that something better is going to happen today. That when we say yes to Jesus, our eyes are brighter, our teeth are whiter, our breath is fresher. Are you with me here? That all of our knees are going to... There's nothing on the list that suggests that. Your, everything that you want in the world is not going to be given to you when you say Jesus Christ is Lord. No, these persons had to what? Endure. They had to persevere. There's an old saying in one of the churches that if God brings you to it, God will get you through it. That sometimes in order to get to the crown, you got to go through the cross. You got to have faith enough in your heart and in your being to know that if I walk right, if I talk right, if I do everything that God expects of me, that eventually, but not tomorrow, the promises of God are going to come to full flower in my life. And I believe that. How many of you believe that? And I believe that God will indeed walk with us through every dark valley but he'll also be with us on every bright and shining mountaintop. So we have to establish a new norm. Well, what should that norm be? Well, the writer said, I, I like this part, Rob. He said, first of all, we need to shake off every weight and sin that clings so closely. I, I know that applies to me. That apply to anybody else? All right, it's just me. And that I should run this race with perseverance, looking to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. In other words, Jesus came to live a life that we might emulate and know that it ain't impossible. Some people want to think it's impossible. Why? Because he's Jesus. But Jesus was divine, but he was also what? Very human. He was just ordinary people. And so when you get to feeling that you cannot endure, when you get to feeling that living a Christian life is too arduous, is not exactly what you signed up for. Read the 11th chapter. And more than that, read the stories behind the 11th chapter, which means you have to read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the whole Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Uh, are 
Are you with me here? Anybody, can, you, can, you, can we do that, Sheila? We, Bible study on Thursday night, can we? Can anybody else come? They can? Okay, I, I, you know, I have to ask the class, you know, because. And if you need some encouragement sometimes, I <clears throat> sometimes have found it in the words of the songwriter where she said, ordinary people, God uses ordinary people, people like you and me who are willing to do what God commands. God uses people who are willing to give their all no matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. Oh, little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand.